Hi guys, this is Joshua LaForge here at Channel Islands High School, and we'll be talking about torque on a truss, which is a more complicated variety of a rotational equilibrium problem. So here's our truss for today. A truss is any solid object that is connected or and able to pivot on one side and then is supported usually by ropes or cables on the other side. Um, the key about a truss is that you have different forces being applied at different places. So I have a weight out here, I have a cable up here, I have the connection over here. And because the forces are all applied at different places, they're each applying a torque. Today our example for a truss is going to be a crane arm. So here we have our crane arm right here. Um, we have a hanging mass that's being supported by the crane arm. The crane, it connects to the main body of the crane down here and so it's able to pivot around that point. And then also um, it's supported by a cable up there on top. Now um, this crane arm is not accelerating. That's the most important thing we need to know about it. Like I said, it's in rotational equilibrium and so all of the torques on the crane arm are going to cancel out. So there are some torques that make the crane want to move clockwise. There are some other torques that make the crane want to move counterclockwise, and those are going to be equal in this case. The question is, what forces are applying those torques? That's what we need to know first. So let's look at it. Well, first, we need to understand that there are some rules to figuring out what torque is applied to this truss. I'm going to provide you with two rules today. The first is that the torque cannot be applied at the center of rotation. So in order for a force to apply a torque, it has to be somewhere other than the center of rotation. That doesn't mean that it can't be at the center of the object, it means it can't be at the center of rotation. Let me give you an example from our truss. This is the center of rotation of the crane arm. This is the point that it wants to rotate around. This is the center of the crane arm. A force here can apply a torque. A force here cannot apply a torque. So what about, so let's use that first rule to figure out what forces are applying torques on our crane arm. So first of all, we have the force of weight of the crane itself. The crane is uniform, just like every object on the AP test, and so we can assume that its mass is right at the center of the crane arm. So let's add the force of weight on the crane's mass. So I'm going to label that force crane because it's the weight of the crane and it always goes right in the center. There's another weight that we have to worry about here and that's the weight of this hanging mass which is applied here. Okay, and I'm going to label that force hang just in case we get confused between which of these is which. The next thing that we need to add in is we need to add in the force of tension on this cable up here. I'll just make that force T which always symbolizes tension for me. Now of these three forces we know they all apply a torque because of our rule. All of these forces are applied somewhere other than the center of rotation. 
There are forces applied here at the center of rotation, but we don't need to worry about them because they don't apply torque. Now, there's another rule that we need to add in that makes these problems more complicated than other rotational equilibrium problems we have seen. And that is that a force only applies torque if it is perpendicular to the object that it is being applied to. A good example of that is this tension. Not all of that force of tension applies a torque to the crane arm. Only the component of that force of tension that is perpendicular to the crane arm will actually apply a torque. So we need to add in that component And I'm going to label that force of tension perpendicular so that I remember it is only part of the whole force of tension. The same thing goes for the force of weight of the crane arm and the force of weight of the hanging mass. Both of those have just a small component that is perpendicular and therefore a small component that actually applies a torque. So I'm going to label those FC perpendicular and FH perpendicular in order for us to see that they are just a small component. Now, I've figured out that the forces that are perpendicular to the truss are the ones that apply a torque. So I need to add those into my equation here in order to actually be able to solve for anything and to really explain this situation. So I need to figure out what the torque is clockwise and I know that the torque clockwise is going to be from the force from the crane from the force of weight on the crane arm and that will be added to the force of weight from the hanging mass. These two torques are going to be canceled by a torque from the tension on the cable. Now remember that each of these torques is only caused by a component of the force, and that's the component perpendicular, right? So when I substitute in that torque is equal to force times radius, I need to substitute in the component of the force rather than the entire force. So like I said, each of these forces is only the perpendicular component. Also notice that I've labeled all of my R values. That's because each of these forces is applied at a different place on the truss or on the crane arm, and therefore each force has a different R value. For the force of tension, it would be the length of the entire crane arm. For the force of weight, it would be one half the length of the crane arm. So when you're solving these problems, you need to pay attention also to your R values. If you get this far, all you need to do at this point in order to do any solving for something in a problem would be algebra. And so this is the majority of the physics as far as I'll go.